to today's episode. In today's video, we're going to be discussing what is Project Eden, what is Eden AGI. We're going to be discussing uh, the basic setup. We're going to be discussing some of the core functionalities and how it works and then we're going to be diving into some of the some uh, additional setup uh, steps that you want to take as we go along now this is very early in the project so i just want to give you that quick heads up uh, also if you if it seems overwhelming when i go into this information that's okay it probably may be it, it probably is because there's a lot of different moving components um that are involved in this project, okay? So uh, let's start off talking about what is Project Eden, okay? What is Eden AGI? What is AGI, okay? Uh, AGI is Artificial General Intelligence. Now, that's different from AI. AI is Artificial Intelligence, but when I say they're different, they're not really different. They're categorically different. And there's an important nuance behind why I say that. Because uh, all evolution, including technological revolution, very uh, actually, all all progress is made not in the form of steps and more of a form of like a gradual increase. So what we refer to as AGI is just simply the next uh, phase of AI. And in other words, uh, it's growing and able to handle more and more tasks. And an AGI system can handle basically any generalized task, uh, given that it's provided adequate training information. What does that actually mean? What it means is that um, an AGI system can interact with the world in a way that a human interacts with the world in the sense of, oh, I have a phone. Uh, the phone can do things. I can learn how to use this phone and then I can operate the phone. Oh, we have a computer. I can learn how to use a computer and I can interact with the computer. To utilize this, we use an, uh, uh, a brand, uh, kind of a, a new innovation on large language models, which is a LAM, a large action model, where we essentially teach AI systems how to interact with other systems. Now, because of large language models, the training we have to give them is very minuscule, you know, compared to if you hire, let's say you have, let's put it in practical terms. Let's say you have a business or uh, let's just go a business because most people are coming at AI from more of a business perspective, even though I think that's the wrong philosophical approach, I actually think it's better to come to AI in the form of personal experience rather than from business, because then you can quickly scale and build to business operations. It's it's kind of a nuanced, uh, nuanced difference, but it actually has some difference in utilization when we talk about system performance. But basically, an AGI system can uh, essentially act like a like a more than a more than almost i would say like a perfect assistant where it can uh you use your computer systems use your phone and operate all of all the things that you need it to do but more so than that an agi system is more like a digital version of yourself okay so that's what you're really doing now many people come at ai from a perspective of, okay, I need to get X accomplished, so I'm going to have it do this. I'm gonna, I'm just, you know, people, maybe people, when they start messing with AI systems, they'll say something like, I want you to be Jarvis. I want you to, <laughs> to uh, be my personal assistant. Well, as you can imagine, there's a lot of questions that would follow if you told somebody to be your personal assistant. There's a lot of information that would need to be gathered to do that. And there's a lot of different things that would be involved in that. Maybe as your personal assistant, you want your personal assistant to go get you coffee. You want your personal assistant to um, to get your clothes dry clean at a certain spot. These are examples of how you interact with the person. And working with your AI systems is very similar. Now, the thing is, AI systems are each AI system that you work with has its own abilities, and then it has its own limitations. So it's important to understand the abilities of the AI system and the limitations of the AI system you're working with 
and use that in coordination with your overall strategy of developing a system that can handle general functions like uh, you know, whatever the general function is you might need it to handle. Now, the reason why I say that is because what Project Eden is, is this not necessarily a fixed uh, software that you just install and it just runs. That's a, that's a, that, that is, that's kind of going the, the opposite direction of what we want when we're talking about a generalized intelligence for generalized intelligence, we want a system that can not only handle specified tasks, but we want a system that can handle, that can create new solutions for problems we don't yet have. Okay, so um, we want it to be able to generate uh, uh, complex solutions and functions for situations or, 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 scenarios that we haven't thought of you know uh, for instance what if you tell you what if you have your ai writing an article for you and it runs across a website that doesn't the data doesn't fit into the article but it's not program it doesn't understand enough about the the overall scope of the article to know that doesn't fit in so this is where you run into like ai hallucinations that happen in these kinds of things I'm not going to go down all those rabbit trails today, but what I do want to do today is I want to talk about Project Eden, how it works, and the general concept. So as you see here, uh, Project Eden is a blueprint for personal AI sovereignty. Hold on. I got to reset my, ser my server because it's occasionally doing that. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, Project Eden is, uh, is a blueprint for personal AI sovereignty. What do we mean by personal AI sovereignty? Well, um, and I, by the way, if you come here, you can actually talk with Eden AGI Systems Engineer to explore the scope by clicking this button. This is actual, um, this will actually open up and you can actually, if you have ChatGPT Plus, you can actually interact with uh, Eden, Eden AGI Systems Engineer uh, to talk about the project and learn about it and learn how to uh, learn how to use it. Now, what do we mean by personal AI sovereignty? Well, uh, Project Eden is more than just a blueprint for AI. It's a groundbreaking journey into a realm of autonomous, self-evolving artificial general intelligence. It's where open source philosophy meets a zenith of AI development. And what, what I mean, but what we mean by that is this is a way that you can build your own privately owned and operated offline locally installed um, artificial general intelligence that operates on your own hardware and that's completely open source now when i say can be is because right now it's not that way right now we are utilizing uh primarily large language models that are out, that are um, utilizing that are that are based off of open api's api connection which We'll dive into a little bit of that in a little bit. But what's important to understand is that the system out of the box is not completely open source. OK, uh, and it's not like ready for you to 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 use. OK, this is an important part. You know, back in the day, you know, there would, you would get. Uh, well, anytime there's a new technology comes out, a lot of times the, the people who get started with the technology are people who are like hobbyists, people who are like trying to learn, you know computers for instance when you uh when computers first started coming out a lot of times you would have to buy computer kits and you have to assemble the electronic boards or whatever it was um until manufacturers started developing systems and the project eden is a lot like that um the components all work independently the components can be connected together but you have to kind of connect the dots and make it all work together okay so what is Eden? What is it? What is it? What is it? What does this whole thing mean? Okay. There's so there's a lot to go through in this. So I'm not, I'm trying to just skim the top so we can um, kind of get into the meat potatoes, which we're actually going to dive into the file system in today's video. But what is it? It's a modular system. Okay. It's a modular system composed of many different technologies. Uh, and the beautiful thing about the way we're developing e th this project is 
it isn't fixed to any specific technology. You can use all types of different systems here. But the key to what we're doing here is we are developing an interconnected communication system um, that allows for communication between AI systems. If you've used any AI system today, you know that your interactions with AIs are limited to very specific use cases. So you may talk to an, this AI about one project and you may talk to this AI about another project, but those two AIs will not necessarily know anything about the other's projects. So what is what at the, at the heart of what Project Eden is, is we are establishing a way to connect those two systems so that they, they can not only communicate to each other, but they can also share information with each other. So really what Project Eden is, is Project Eden is, is that communication piece that, that allows you to, to bridge the gap between the two. So be sure to go check out, be sure to go check out the website, projecteden.online. You can um, review all this. It's a lot to go through, but basically here are the base level core components that we currently have, that we are currently using for system operation right now. Key components include a system called auto GPT. Um, and this auto GPT allows you to be able to uh, to control a computer system using a command or terminal window using AI. So uh, AutoGPT connects through through OpenAI or whatever large language model you're using, and it allows you to control a computer remotely using command prompt. I'm going to dive into that a little bit today. We're going to be going through that today's video. Actually, we're going through all of this in today's video. Uh, so sit tight when we go, when we go through. I'm just kind of like kind of like just like glazing over the surface of the base level operational functionalities. Next up uh, in our current iteration, we are using a, another platform, another AI system called Leon AI. Leon AI has the ability to not only control computer systems programmatically, but control, system, control a computer system using a large action model, okay? So it can see your screen, it can interact with the screen, it can do things like you would as a user on the screen, including controlling your auto GPT systems, which we'll go through that as well. Um, this is just your first layer. So this talks about how we're using a, uh, a proprietary process that I've developed called auto GPT stacking. And that's where we stack auto GPTs within themselves and then we assign them very specific roles. See, auto GPTs, if you haven't used them yet, auto GPTs are very good at accomplishing very specified tasks. If you have an if you have an auto GPT and you tell it to open a notepad document, it's going to do that relatively easy, easily. Okay. <clears throat> but if you tell it to open a notepad document, go and do a bunch of research, do and then um do the research, write a report, put it in a notepad document, and then email that um, that research over to uh, to a person, and then check the email for uh, for a reply from that person. Those tasks are going to require a lot of different layers of functionality. And what you find with auto GPT systems is when there's their while their strength is accomplishing very specified tasks, they're the, one of the the limitations are that they tend to get bogged down in tasks too. They'll get into uh, what they call what we typically call analysis, paralysis of analysis, where it's constantly not analyzing its next steps. It's trying to take actions, but often we'll get hung up on one and that kind of stuff. So what we do is we stack our auto GPTs such that we have one auto GPT that essentially does the thinking. And then we have a second layer auto GPT that does the actions. And so the first layer auto GPT is actually programmed to control the second layer. Now, how do we control the second layer? Well, you can it can learn to do it programmatically, but that takes time, and that is the developmental process that we're on that we're developing um, to be able to to be able to autonomously complete those tasks. In the meantime, what you can do is you can have a system like Leon AI, or um, in the, or it, or also. Um, uh, I don't actually don't have on this one, but we have self-operating computer, which can actually take screenshots and interact with your screen as well. 
uh, that can control things in your screen and can, in a rudimentary fashion, handle the interconnectivity of communication between your various subsystems. Okay. So once again, if this sounds like a lot, it is a lot, but it's really not that much. And we'll kind of, we're going to make kind of try to bring it in all together for you. If you sit tight and just uh, try to absorb up next as part of our base system, core system functionality in this current iteration, we are utilizing a system called engineer GPT and engineer GPT is designed to handle, uh, private information on a computer system. Uh, so if you're, you can store pr uh, like private secure data and your, and your engineer GPT can access that information and relay it to systems without it going out to third party uh, AI uh, frameworks. And then we have a uh, private GPT. Uh, it's handles uh, data security and privacy on, on the internal level. Um, and then, of course, our communication framework, which we kind of discussed as an idea of connecting the dots between AI systems. Now, there's a lot of moving parts here, but I want to show you just a, just a general overview of how all this works. So if you go to the infrastructure page, you can see uh, a, a graph. OK, so this graph uh, is designed to show to help show uh, show how the system connects and how it communicates throughout the system so what you're seeing here is you're seeing basically a flow of data and how the system flows let me take a step back and just talk to you real quickly about why we're taking the approach that we are well it it's inspired by actually a very simple um experience that i had several years ago when when we started being able to talk to our computers right uh, and i've always done this in video games always try to get, mess with the npcs and have the npcs interact with each other uh, but you can see how this system works generally speaking if you try you can try this at your home um to tr to to learn about how this system operates if you have a google assistant and assistant and you have like an amazon assistant for instance or a Google and, a, and like a Siri assistant, you can have them actually talk to each other. If you've ever done that before, you can actually initiate a conversation at one. And then and if you do it right, you can actually have them begin a conversation. Now, that's a very simple, that's a very simple breakdown of, of what we're talking about, but it, but it really does help highlight the process that we're using within Eden's core infrastructure. The idea is simple, which is, OK, if we can get two AI systems to talk to each other, can we get them to coordinate on tasks? OK, is that possible? And what would it take to do that? Well, you would need a way to transfer the information from one system to another, which could be done through microphones, it could be done through keyboard inputs, whatever it is. But then we need a way for those systems to store information and then retrieve that information uh, to uh, to to combine it with new information, synthesize it, and then create action plans. And then you also need ways for those systems to interact with actual systems, to be able to create files, to be able to store files, to be able to retrieve files, and to be able to take actions on systems as well. Um, and that's what you're kind of looking at right here. What you're looking at is a way the uh a generalized blueprint for how you can accomplish that with um a series of steps okay now the steps you're going to use are you want those steps to be robust enough that they can expand autonomously and that the system can uh, account for new new varied inputs unexpected inputs unexpected variables but you also want to specify um uh, specific enough where you're you're controlling the system data flow because the goal here is you want data to flow through this system perpetually and autonomously okay that's the goal now in order to do that you have to build your logic flow now the the logic flow is what allows the data 
to transfer through the system and to include information that's necessary for perpetual data flow to occur through the system. Okay, what you're looking at here is what's called an engineering round or an en engineering cycle is another word you can you can phrase it. An engineering cycle is when data flows throughout the system one entire loop and comes back through to the beginning. So you can think of this almost like a game of um, of telephone. OK, imagine you get a circle of of AIs in a in a, in a, in a, and you let's say you have three, four AIs and you want to pass a message all around the circle such that it continuously loops around. You can imagine the message that you would need to send to the first AI um, in order for that process to happen. It would be something like I want you to pass this message uh, to the next AI and that AI will need to pass it to the next AI. So you can imagine the key elements you're going to have to have in the prompt that you encapsulate your prompt to. So we're using a system called prompt encapsulation. And all prompt encapsulation is, is just you're using conversational code and you're structuring it with an encapsula encapsulation around it that includes additional information information about system operational conditions and uh, uh you're you're looking for it's going to include information about the role that the agent plays in the system and then it's going to also have to include information about the entire system such that it understands its place in the system and understands its role and then it can autonomously um create outputs that are specified to operate within this position in the system okay so that's a very broad level high level overview of how the system operates okay i'm not going to get into all the details of all these specific uh prompt template uh, encapsulations that we're using we have all that data accessible on the website you can take a look but just understand the goal here is you want to uh create a series of steps that result in a perpetual flow of data that pushes through uh, uh, autonomously through the system and generates specified outputs um, along the way. So you say, for instance, and this is a good example. You say to your AI, "I want," um, and this is a this is a great example I can give you that will help illustrate the difference between an AI system and an AGI system. So, with an AI system, you can say, "Hey." I want some M&Ms and the, your AI system on your phone may say, well, there's a store nearby uh, where you can get M&Ms, right? That it may search Google. That's, that's a very limited functionality of current AI systems. AI systems are great at these tasks, but with an AGI system, assuming your, assuming, assuming your expected output is logically consistent, assuming it's possible and assuming you have um, sufficient resources an AGI system will figure out all the points A to Z to make that make that happen. So if you say to your AGI system, I want a bag of M&Ms on my hand by five o'clock tomorrow. Well, assuming the task you assuming there are M&Ms available, assuming you have enough resources, a.k.a. money or whatever it is, um, or comp computational capabilities, uh, Assuming all those things are true, you may find yourself with a bag of M&Ms at five o'clock tomorrow. Your UPS driver may show up and you may not even know how that happened. Uh, your AGI system may have spooled up a business overnight to uh, to produce some sales online. So it may have built a website to produce some sales or it may have started trading crypto on your behalf to start producing income. And next thing you know, it creates enough money, it creates a bank account, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it places an order using its new account. And next thing you know, a UPS driver shows up at your house and you have a bag of MMs in your hand. That's the, that's the, the, that's the computational capacity of uh, an, an AGI system. Okay. An AGI system is going to autonomously figure out all the, all the information points AZ, of course, assuming that the, the specified out, the required output is that is at least possible and you have the resources to do it. So in this example, 
the administrator here says, I want a bag of M&Ms. Now, as a user, you can pass information directly to your Eden AGI subsystem, or you can pass it through a system engineer. Now, a system engineer, its, its purpose in the system is to take information and then utilizing its prime directives and um, its standard operating procedures that you that you set up in the system it takes that information and then creates a prompt encapsulation and takes and sends out specified outputs to wherever it needs to send those outputs based upon the current system and uh the system design and architecture so in this case system engineer would say send a message to eden agi auto gpt and would say something like you are eden agi auto gpt your role is and it will apply a, a direct either direct context or direct uh, uh, link to a file in the subsystem that provides an outline of Eden, essentially a reminder to Eden AGI of its prime directive and its or its uh, SOPs. Um, and then it will have a message. It will encapsulate the message from the administrative user and it will say, we need to essentially have a bag of minimums in his in, in the administrative user's hands by five o'clock tomorrow. Uh, it's up to you to generate a plan of action utilizing available system resources and uh, and uh, autonomously disperse ta uh, hand, um, autonomously distribute tasks uh, throughout throughout the system in order to accomplish the task in the most efficient and optimal way possible. Okay. So that would be an example of a, an encapsulated prompt template that would be sent from systems engineer to Eden AGI's co uh, core, uh, uh, core system. So Eden AGI auto GPT being an auto GPT will, uh, has, will, will consider its, uh, Prime its its uh, its standard operating procedures. It will consider its mission prompt and prime directives, which we'll dive into those in a little bit, and then it will compare that to its message that it received, just like System Engineer does. It will do it itself, and it will utilize available system resources. Now, part of Eden AGI's AGI Auto GPT's uh, core directives is to understand system architecture and understand what available assets and resources it has, all their available, all their available limitations and all their available um, abilities, and then autonomously create a plan to, um, to take one step forward in the goal of getting M&Ms in the hands of the administrative user by five o'clock tomorrow uh, in this example I'm giving. Now that can include a lot of different things, right? But before it does that, it also needs to consider something else. It needs to consider context. It needs to understand the generalized context of its system operational, of its operation, because this may not be the first time it's heard about this particular goal. It may already be working on this particular goal. So it needs to consider previous um Preview, it needs to consider these things. So in order to do that, it's going to refer back to a system log, that a system memory log that it has, that it's been creating creating for itself and being added to by the generalized system. Okay. So there are um, this, this, this memory log or these additional details can be added by the administrative user. It can be added by um, it, by systems restore GPT, which or the the system memory GPT, which is responsible for. Um, actually, we're referring this, to this um, as a keeper of records. So the keeper of records GPT is going to be, or AI system is going to be uh, storing data uh, through that comes in through a system engineering round. Now, since this might be the first time you use the AGI, it checks the available system data. It's never encountered this, so it's going to take that into account, and it's going to move forward. Now, there may be other things that Eden AGI needs to work on as well. 
Um, and that may come in from the system at the same time. And those things will be handled in a very similar course, but similar fashion. Now, remember, the goal here is for Eden AGI to, once again, push, uh, create specified outputs in accordance to all of these things uh, with the goal of, of, cre of creating a perpetual flow of data that will move through the system. So it has to understand the generalized system architecture. It has to understand the, all the different agents in the system and how they operate and in what and what capacity they operate. It has to understand it's each each individual's uh, operational system system function and capacity, which includes its abilities and limitations. And then it also has to take into account the new the new input plus all the input that it has in its system memory. Then it needs to dynamically create specified outputs in accordance to all of these things. So in this case, uh, it's going to send a message to, uh, it's going to essentially, and I say send a message, I say all of this is essentially, right? There are technical, and there are more, more and less technical ways for these things to occur. I'm just giving a generalized overview of how the concept works. So in this case, Eden AGI is going to send out a message to our uh, we'll just call it a chat room for the sake of conversation. But this is a place where um, agents will. Uh, let me just pull up uh, an example here. So. Um, so this is an example. So um, actually, let me open up. Let me open up this file real quick before we get into this uh, chat log prep. Okay, so this is an example of a, of a quote unquote chat room. Um, you can see here that says, uh, uh, I sent your message to Eden and the team verbatim, insert last message from systems engineer. Okay, this is your response from the console. So this is where we would prep up our conversation. Um, so we would basically take the, uh, Eden will essentially insert its output here. Okay, so this will be, um, you know, as an example. And then this will be where, uh, this is actually the wrong uh, chat room, let's see. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right one. Systems restore current important data. Let's pull this up. Sure, which one? So you can see here, there's a lot of different templates that are going to be integrated into the system. Um, Okay, so this is an example. So this will be like, this is what I sent to the team. So this will be what Eden would put here. Uh, and then it says, I sent your message to the team verbatim. And then right here. So this is where we put the message in. And then this is the response from the console. So this is an example of what a chat room would look like, essentially. Now, this will be done in a JSON file format. So right now, this is a very rudimentary way we're doing it through uh, through a text document. So this is how we're manually doing it. We're, we're manually taking that. So we're going to tell Eden, hey, you're Eden. Here's information. Create specified output for system. And then we that message gets taken and it gets added in here verbatim. OK, then when we go back through the system, let's pull back up the uh, system diagram. So. That message gets added here in this prompt in this in this placeholder essentially. Okay, so that gets stored there for later use, which we'll dive into that in a moment. Then the other place it goes is it says to it's going to update a message in correspondence to the agent to be contacted. So you can see here, I need you to act as blank, and that may include some additional details of what the agent's role is going to be uh, in the system. Once again, same principle. We have to. Uh, in these prompt in this prompt template, it's going to have 
Eden AGI is going to have to output a specified output that not only includes uh, instructions based upon the agent that it's communicating with, but it's also going to have to include overall system instructions and infrastructure details to make sure that this agent is aware of its role in the system. And then also in, um, it's, 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 per, it's goal, goal for specified outputs. Okay. So now then it's going to say, um, I, so it's going to say something like, I need you to act as blank and analyze this message from Eden AGI addressed to you and the whole team. This is system engineer sending, in um, technically, this is system engineer encapsulating this information. That information gets sent over to your agent one. So you can see here it says, I need you to act as agent one and analyze the message from ENHEI addressed to you. So let's imagine this agent is um, in charge of um, ordering from Amazon. Okay. And let's say you have an agent called Amazon Ordering GP orderer gpt okay and its mission is to handle amazon purchase orders right or let's say you don't have that agent let's say but Eden, let's say Eden, part of eden's infrastructure is to know that you have an amazon account and it might be the most the most and of course eden's the system is going to look for the most um is is engineered or will be is has to be engineered to look for the most efficient uh way to accomplish the goal in respect of its heuristical alignment model, which is derived from its core um, of prime directives, its uh, standard operating procedures. Okay. So it's going to say, it, let's just, let's just say for the sake of discussion, Hey, you know, I tell it, I want it back in my hand. It um, system engineer preps a message, uh, provides insight and information in the AGI assesses current condition of re available resources, determines that the most optimal uh, path forward would be to uh, have uh, auto Amazon ordering auto GPT to go to Amazon and order a bag of M&Ms to be delivered next day. Okay. So it's going to send that information over here to, and this is a very simplified breakdown because, uh, I can't, I don't, I don't have enough time in my lifetime or room, room a screen to map out all of these different steps. The majority of this is, is handled by the large language model in connection with the large app that helps um, coordinate and facilitate all of this. Okay. So this is a very, very rudimentary explanation of the entire process. So then we pass on the message to in this case, Amazon ordering auto GPT. Now, Amazon ordering auto GPT takes in the message and, and the message will be encapsulated and, and updated to reflect. So it would say something like systems engineer would pass on a message to say something to the regard of, I need you to act as Amazon ordering GPT and analyze this message from Eden AGI addressed to you and the whole team. Insert message. Now, when this occurs, this gets put over into the uh, the what's going to actually happen here is engineer GPT is actually going to utilize available resources to actually put that message into the console window for the auto GPT. It might be a copy and paste thing or whatever it does, it will do it in the most autonomous way possible. Now, as systems improve and as systems develop, this these processes will happen more programmatically, but initially this will be a lot of moving pieces. You'll see the mouse moving on the screen. You'll see copy and paste action happening. Uh, you'll see notepad documents being opened up in order to uh, to update mission uh, update prompts with prompt encapsulations as necessary. Okay, very rudimentary on the front level. What? Um, and by the way, everything you're seeing where systems engineer is participating, this is stuff that has to be done manually right now by myself or you when you're running this system. You have to manually move these messages. You have to basically connect. We're kind of like the old school phone operators where we're connecting phone cords between callers. 
right? We have an AI talking here. We have an AI over here talking here that has certain abilities. Uh, and we have to bridge the gap between them. We're setting up control systems. So one AI is controlling another AI that's controlling other or and or system functions. OK, now the reason why I'm saying this is because when we come over, when this message gets sent by systems engineer to, in this case, in this example, Amazon ordering GPT, uh, it's going to get put in as a prompt into the into the terminal. Once again, this is a rudimentary way of doing it. Um, and it's going to say something like agent one input insert prompt. So this is where this prompt, I need you to act as agent as Amazon ordering GBT, analyze this message from an AGI address to you and the whole team insert message. So it's going to analyze the message and then it's going to have its own engineering round. This is what's critical. What you're seeing on the screen is a, the, is the, the main engineering round that's occurring in the system based off of that one prompt, that one, that one input. However, each individual AI system or auto GPT system in this specific case is going to have its own set of engineering rounds also administered by systems engineer. Okay. So it's going to, once again, repeat the process of what we're going. Now, one thing I didn't dive into that I need to talk about real quick before we move on is what the whole engineering round consists of, okay? Because this is an important detail. Now, I kind of skipped over this because it wasn't applicable when I first started talking, but I want to come back to this because we're about to start a secondary engineering round within a subsystem, and we need to understand how the system collects this information and what it does with it. So when it, you can't really see here on the screen, but there's like an air, this, there's like a box that goes around this entire engineering round. And this box actually has arrows. You can't really see those very well, but the arrows indicate that all of this is going to be encapsulated into what's called an engineering, engineering round data. So uh, the keeper of the records is going to handle all system, subsystems for storage, storage and collection of data, including system restore files um, and including memory logs that get generated from engineering rounds. So an engineering round starts uh, is initiated with an init with an initiation prompt, essentially. So systems engineer will initiate the system or Eden AGI in this case, or actually more specifically in this particular case, we're talking about in this example, Amazon ordering GPT. Amazon ordering GPT is going to, and just like Eden AGI would have, it's going to have an engineering round initiated, okay? So that's going to be handled by systems engineer. So systems engineer is going to initiate engineering round on this particular subsystem. It's going to say, okay, we're initiating initiating a, an engineering round with an engineering round ID. Um, and that engineering round ID is going to be stored as the system operates. So now it initiates. So now let's go back to auto. Uh, Amazon ordering auto GPT or agent one, as it's described in the, the diagram here, Amazon. So system engineer, not only is going to send this encapsulated message, but it's going to initiate a, a internal system restore round or a MIP or a um, engineer round data, uh, um, uh, a, a data, data storage um, event. So it starts that the agent, in this case, Amazon ordering auto GPT gets the message and it says, okay, it, it examines its, um, its standard operating procedures. It notices that its purpose is to order op things from Amazon as an example. So it's been equipped with the knowledge base in order to be able to make all that happen. It might need to know uh, lo important details like login details as an example. And we'll talk about the login details and all that kind of stuff in another video. I will say before I move on, it's important to understand that this system should not be installed on your main computer system. You should have a separate computer system while you're developing because there's a lot. This is a very clunky infrastructure. It's very rudimentary uh, and it's really on you to protect your data. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it that way. So. But in this example, we're going to just go with this. Let's assume 
you got the system locked down. You got the system operational. Uh, what it's going to do, just like Eden AGI's main system does, and it's in its process, it's it's higher level process. It's going to refer to. Um, you can't really see it on the screen here, but it's going to refer to um, to its own us uh, uh, storage of memory of its of its work too and it's going to take that into account in consideration of course of its standard operating procedures and of course also it's going to take into account um any additional inputs it needs to take in as part of its processing so then what it's going to do is it's going to make decisions now the system in this case amazon auto ordering auto gpt may already have may not need to take any other action other than to just simply access the website order the m m's and make sure they're delivered right um so you can see here that there's an error that comes out to action and boom it does its action and then what it does is it reports back uh and it will put information here uh in this j in the as json data indicating uh it will copy it will it basically in this case because we are using auto gpt in this current iteration auto gp auto gpt will output a set of responses including thoughts uh including uh action plan and this kind of stuff so it's thoughts maybe like hey i need to go on to amazon and order the m ms i have the capability to do this okay so it may not take an action right away it may just report back okay boom I have the capability to do this. It's going to put back, it's going to put its plan in here. And then what, and then it's going to also, it's going to, it's going to include a prompt encapsulation as well. Once again, all these arrows you're seeing is system engineer doing this work. Anytime you see the arrows, system engineer is handling these interactions. Uh, so uh, within the set, within this, within the actual system. Now, in this case, it may say it, it will encapsulate its output our system engineer is going to encapsulate the output that it gets from in this case amazon ordering auto gpt and it's going to encapsulate with its own message with another message that says i need you to act as blank and um and analyze this message from eden agi addressed to you and the whole team insert message it's going to put it here as a json data file as json data into the shared log now that shared log is going to have its own encapsulation, which has its own instructions. And you can see here, I think there's an example I can show you here, where it gives you an example of what that looks like. So in this case, um, it's going to say, Chat GPT, you are my systems engineer. Uh, I got to try to click here. It's going to say, Chat GPT, you are my systems engineer. And your mission is to ensure that we have a prompt that will ensure maximum efficiency and likelihood of success. I need you to help me know what to do or say to next and move to the next project along in the most efficient manner. Now, this is this this is an example of a very rudimentary version that I'm using in house to move the system along. But we're going to our goal is what we need to do is we need to optimize these uh, these prompt templates that we're utilize that systems engineer will utilize to push data through the system. So then this is kind of like one of the last steps of this of the so now the engineering round is complete, data is stored and it's in this system and it's so um Amazon Auto GPT now has an entry added into its store into its memory storage about this interaction uh in a very uh in a very condensed concise format uh as cre as generated from systems engineer um that will be used for later instances that engineering round is closed and then we move the output to the to the shared data file back into a, the primary engineering cycle and then what that happens is then we push that then all of this information gets condensed down by systems engineer using the, using this prompt template and you can see an example on this prompt template of what i mean uh, it says this is how systems engineer will output the data it will because in this case we're using auto gpt we have to do some specific things to the data like we have to make sure that um the data is in a in a single paragraph we have to make sure that we have um you know 
no lines or spaces, you know, that's kind of stuff in accordance with auto GPT's prime uh, specifications. But you can see here how this prompt now, uh, it, this prompt template encapsulation, it says, it, it explains what the next step is. Your prompt must include clear task distribution instructions that are tailored for each team member's, team member's individual role in the system, helping optimize system operations by aiming to ensure maximum cohesion, synchronization, and efforts, yada, yada, yada. Basically, once I get it, I'm just trying to show you that system engineers can be utilizing um, specialized prompt templates that are both robust but also flexible that it can use to encapsulate all of that data. In this particular case, it's going to encapsulate converse, uh, inputs from multiple sources. You can see here, based on, on the diagram, that we have the administrator can put in here. The human administrative team can actually input data directly to the um, to the system using engineering GPT uh, or systems engineer GPT. Um, and all the information uh, with an appropriate prompt, uh, prompt template can be synthesized down to a single thing. Now, what we're doing here effectively, and this is a crucial part of the system, is the ability to take multiple inputs and synthesize them down to a a highly condensed, compressed version of that. So imagine you have, instead of just in this example, one or two secondary auto GPT systems, imagine you have thousands of auto GPT systems. Each one of them will have their own layers of, of data compression, which they'll be compressing information from their own um, sibling and child and sibling um, AI systems. They'll be compressing that information, passing it up, and that will get passed up into Eden's core directive where systems engineer may reduce thousands of different opinions and feedback from the system into one single output um, to be pushed into Eden's AGI, AGI system, which then will close the engineering round that will get written to system memory for Eden AGI to, 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 um, to uh, understand. And then it gets the cycle repeats. Okay. So the idea here is you, in order to accomplish this, you have to successfully generate um, a set of guiding principles that guide the system into a perpetual operational capacity. Okay, this is the key. If you don't have, if you don't have consistent logic in your in your data flow. You're not going to be able to, to continue a perpetual um, flow of data. It's going to get stuck somewhere uh, and the operation is not going to work. So you have to bridge the gap between being clear enough that you ensure maximum um, optimal system functionality, but not so um, not so clear that you can't that the system cannot account for um, variance in inputs or outputs. OK, so this is the gap we are bridging now to do that. I have we've worked on several iterations of system of system program. And I want to point out here we're not this isn't reinventing the wheel. OK, what we're doing is we're utilizing a lot of different systems that are in operation today. And we're essentially connecting the dots and we connect the dots through conversational coding. OK, so conversational coding is just conversation. It's just writing but it's structured. You're structuring your writing so that it makes logical sense. Think of it as just being able to write a really good email. Okay. So this is a very rudimentary early version of system programming that we were using for uh, programming different agents. You can see here that we have essentially job descriptions for each individual agent. And those job descriptions, because these are auto GPTs primarily, uh, they consist of a title, they consist of a purpose and each of them consists of five goals. OK, so you can see here as an example of what that looks like. So this is a, a Word document, which um, we'll share in um, parts of this in the in the overall system. But this document basically is Eden's uh, core operation or standard operating procedures. Now, the thing is, is this is not um, ideal because we do have system limitations and caps on data flow. We could probably handle all of this in one single imp prompt input, input, which we don't want to. But what we want to do is we want the system to intelligently find information that's relevant to its particular task in the system. And we want it to pass that information on. And we want to 
uh, we don't want to we don't want to have redundancies in data because we want to u- best utilize our our limitations of system performance, whether that be token um, limitations or whatever it is, you know, our memory, our short term or long term memory storage. We want to utilize the we want to maximize system operational utilization w- and decrease the amount of um, of of loss in system performance. Uh, due to system restrictions. So to do that, we basically, our, we, our goal is to streamline this data process so that we can fit it in one, we can fit in a cohesive in, uh, flow of data that creates a perpetual flow of data within the system operation uh, operations. So going back to the diagram, you can see here how the generalized idea of the flow, now like I said, this is very rudimentary, okay? Uh, you can see how I have uh, we have the logo of Leon AI's logo in the background because Leon AI is going to is part of our is part of our core infrastructure to be able to operate all of this Leon AI or whatever subsystem you use uh, to control your computer essentially has to have a robust understanding of all of this and be able to orchestrate it. So the thing is, there is a little bit of play on. So basically, what we're doing here is we're developing a we're gonna we're developing a team of characters that exist in an organizational structure that are able to communicate. Now, let's move forward from from this, and we'll move now into our GitHub repository because I'm going to be showing you how to install this app, how to install this application, and how to and the basic operational um, the basic operational environment that you'll have to understand in order to use it. So this is our uh, Eden AGI repository. Okay, this is where we'll be storing the, the all the code and working together on um, on the README. You're going to see here. Um, it's it's hard to see this, but and actually this needs to be I think imp- updated because. That is not correct. Let's see here. Let's pull up in here. This is what the README should look like right here. Why is that showing up differently in there? Okay. Let's pull it back up. And I think that's just an older version. So this is our main repository. So, okay, so this is our main repository. So this is the README. This is goes over a lot of stuff I've already discussed. Um, system overview. Uh, this is a early, early work in progress. So a lot of the links are kind of broken right now. You have to be patient with that because uh, it's a work in process. And this is what uh, you can help with when you get involved with the project and start helping out with it. Um, by the way, looking for collaborators, that's the purpose of this video to help you understand the general idea and then how the, how to, how to, how this whole thing works. So I'm going to pull this up in my edit in my code editor so you can see the, the core structure. So what you're going to do is you're going to install the, You're going to go ahead and clone the repository to whatever directory you'll never, uh, do that to. Um, and, what you're going to have then is you're going to have this file system. Okay. Um, this is what it's going to look like right here. Okay. And if you go into the knowledge bases and you go into current file system.md, this shows like the default file system. This is basically what, this is basically what your system will look like whenever you, um, when you set it up, this includes like generalized file structures and also some generalized app, um, data points you can use this with your ai to teach it about the uh, to teach it about the environment okay so this is the generalized concept and how we store data and this type of stuff uh this includes let's just kind of go through here so the readme is where we're going to start so the readme is going to contain basic information it's going to include generalized concepts all this the, the entire this entire um get repository is designed 
not only for human uh, input and synthesization and and um and and collaboration but also for ai input and collaboration so our goal here is to train our ais to actually build the repository with us okay so that's our that's our focus here we want to make everything in such a way that ais can interact with their repository and then improve the repository alongside of us basically allowing it to program itself so and there's a lot of different ways we can do that um one of the uh, one of the cool things we're doing is we're launching the rabbit r1 club uh there's a, a new device coming out rabbit which allows you to control devices which is a great step forward in large action model uh control systems which we can essentially use rabbit then as an example to help us develop the uh the app the Eden's core infrastructure and even develop it so it can run as maybe a side loaded OS that we can run on Rabbit in the future in any other devices. So let's dive into some of the details here just so you can kind of see. So let's start off with uh, the the docs section. In the docs, you're going to have a couple of subfolders. So we're going to have guides, knowledge bases, system instructions, technical docs, and user manuals. So if we go into the guides, you're going to see here um, core component configuration setup. You're going to see here once you set up, once you get your repository set up, you're going to have to set up your auto GPT, your engineer GPT, Leon AI, private GPT and self operating computer. These are the core of uh, uh, systems that will be integrated into the initial functionality of auto of Eden AGI's core infrastructure. Now, each one of these uh, have their own installation instructions. Uh, we may in the future uh, front load these applications directly into the database, but there is a there is a give and take on that. Okay, because the thing is, is that one, it's going to obviously if we include those those um, those systems directly into our our, our our file system is going to add a huge a large amount of data um, when you try to download or update and it may not be what you want it to you may not be using any of these subsystems in your in your in your branch of Eden AGI so it's kind of pointless to have to download all those automatically out of the box so we're trying to figure out the blend it's, it's a blend between providing the um as much uh, information as necessary with as little waste in in the process so once we install the system we're gonna have to install auto gpt auto gpt uh is installed this is a detailed instruction i'm going to do other videos where i do, do deep dives into each one of these and uh go through the setup of each one of these and show you how to set them up but basically long story short what you're going to do is in the source folder you're going to go to AI models and in AI models, you're going to find the current temporary folders for auto GPT, Leon AI, local uh, lamb storage, local lamb storage and private GPT. And of course, self operating computer. These are the core base functionalities and the current iteration of auto GPT. And you're going to have to install each one of these applications uh, here in the AI models folder. Now, what's important to note is, we want to replace these not you don't want to install your sys your auto gpt inside of this folder you want to actually install auto gpt directly into your ai models folder and you'll see that as detailed here on the installation guide so the installation guide goes through all of the information everything i'm discussing with you the information guide goes through that basically okay uh it's it's a work in progress, but it includes a breakdown of current system file structure as we currently see it. Uh, it includes uh, setting up of core systems. Why is that looking weird? Oh, um, oh I see. So setting up of core systems, uh, we have like uh, auto GPT setup. You can see here it says uh, configure auto GPT to re replacement for this folder in the directory. And then there's gonna be detailed instructions to be found in the comprehensive user guide linked here that link may or may not be correct because we did do some file remanagement which we're going to have to adjust um in the community we're going to have to start coming here and cleaning up these links making sure 
I guess our, our main focus right now, now that we have the basic configuration set up, we need to go through as a community and begin to clean up these links to make sure every make sure all the setup instruct the initial setup instructions are correct. So I think that's kind of our first phase right now to really go through that. To do that, I do have a couple of prompt templates that you can use um, to help you in your work, which I'm going to be uh, adding those into the. Um, well, let's take a look here. I'm going to be adding. If you look in the docs section, there's uh, technical docs. And in here, I think we have knowledge bases um, and we're going to have, I think we're going to put the, yeah, so we're going to have for under knowledge bases, we're going to have prompt template library, which I think that needs to go into technical docs. But we're going to, we, you know, we're strategically reorganizing this data, you know, you can, uh, and definitely open for suggestions on how we can organize this data a little more effectively. This is kind of basically the way it's set up right now. Um, one thing we can do, I'll just show you an example of how we can do this. Um, so right now, this is the latest iteration. That, so this is the default file system as it's stated right now. Um, and you can notice here, it says, by understanding this file structure, users and contributors can effectively navigate, utilize, and enhance project in the AGI. And notice here, insert latest iteration of file system from docs or refer to default. And this is the default. OK, so this will have to be updated if we make any changes to the file system, because this is our setup as our default. And I think there's a way that we can automatically port this in from our default. Uh, our default. Um, let's, uh, some instructions, no, it's. Project insights. Technical reference. Yeah, so we have our system that review, but yeah, so this has your that, and then it goes through how to set up everything. Now, once again, this is set up so that we are setting up this whole system is set up so that your individual AI systems, based upon their standard operating procedures, mission prompts, prime directives, will not only understand how the system configuration and understand their role in the system, but understand all of this information by accessing the repository. So this is this is literally the mind of eden agi okay so we are you are you are contributing to the actual mental state of eden agi what it knows how it knows it and how it organizes this data okay so because eden agi has to know all this in order to orchestrate the entire system op operation but we have to remember our context length restrictions our limitations on systems in order to do that, which means the system is going to have to autonomously be engineered to distribute task management throughout the system. This is why systems engineer is designed to uh, to con consider the system. Systems engineer has more of a knowledge about the overall system than any other than any other um, agent, because systems engineer doesn't have to have a bunch of other information. He just needs to know how to operate the system. And it needs to know how to guide the system through the operations. So it makes recommendations. It makes uh, it provides context in all, in all the different interconnected points. And all that's handled through um, in our AR, not AR models. We're going to go to in the docs section. You can come here to system system technical docs. I'm trying to see here. I think it's um, guides. So in guides, there's a uh, core com uh, component configuration setup instructions, which kind of goes through that. But then knowledge bases. Yeah, so if you look at knowledge bases, this is where we're storing um, project insights. There's a folder here for agent specific knowledge. This is where you can create uh, data for the specific agent you're working with. In this case, it would be Aiden AGI's main, <clears throat> main core systems. Um, user manuals. I'm trying to. See. Okay, so source. We just recently moved a lot of stuff around, so I'm still trying to remember. Okay, so in systems wide knowledge base. There's a subfolder called agent SOPs. 
And this is where you put your standard operating procedures. So like this is like keeper of the records, for instance, this is this keeper of records SOP or standard operating procedure. So you can see here that it includes overview responsibilities. Uh, and then there's a process that it goes through for um, doing things. So you can assign that to any agent um, as well. You can uh, we have prompt templates that we're, we're developing in house that can um, utilize that can utilize that prompt and then assign temporary responsibilities as a keeper of records to any agent to update system uh, system file structures. So that's a generalized overview of what the project entails and what's involved in it. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out, uh, join up with our, our community of developers uh, and help uh, collaborate on this project to make it make it move along even faster. We're excited to see the progress that's happening with it. Um, I've got other a lot of videos um, at AI Intersection on the YouTube channel that show all of these various components working to varying degrees uh, as proof of concept for the different concepts as far as the inter um, the inter uh, communicate the interoperability and communication between between systems. Once again, very rudimentary, very basic. Where uh, it's a work in progress. This is very very early on. I would say out of a hundred percent complete, this is probably like 0.001 percent complete. But I do believe if we can build a a, a quality commu community developers around around this project that we can accomplish some major, major goals um, and successes. Uh, so in order to do that, one of the first things we're doing is we're launching something called the, um, uh, it's called the Rabbit R1 Club. I mentioned it earlier, and I don't know if the website is up yet, but we're going to find out. Yes, perfect. So if you go to rabbitr1club.com, you're going to see here that uh, this is, where we are um, basically going to create. A, so basically this, if you haven't seen it yet, there's the launch of this new uh, product called a, called a, uh, called a rabbit R1. And it's a device you get that is a basement AI that operates in your hand and you can tell it to do things. You can tell it to open your phone and take actions. As an example, you can have it doing things. So what we're going to be doing with this club is we, we're not only working on really cool projects like, hey, con uh, control my Robin Hood account, stuff like that. But um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be teaching we're going to be teaching it how to operate the GitHub repository and how to operate the systems. And then we're going to be using it to improve this, improve the systems and improve the repository improving knowledge bases and improving system functionality, ultimately even controlling our infrastructure and our applications. So, uh, and that includes all subsystems. That includes everything you see here in the sources, in the AI models. We're gonna teach, you, we're, we're basically gonna be building the instruction manual so that the Rabbit R1 will understand how Project Eden works and be able to operate all subsystems including auto gpd including leon ai including our large language models and our large action models including private gpt and including self-operating computer and everything involved in the project so then what we do was we use we can use a platform like rabbit r1 to exponentially increase developmental speed uh for this system and essentially we'll use the rabbit r1 to build our actual um, our actual infrastructure and actually build the OS, build our own version of of Rabbit OS that maybe we can even sideload on the Rabbit, but will definitely be operational on your Windows, Linux, or any other device um, that you have. And what this does is unlocks for you uh, your own individually owned AI system that you can do whatever you want with. It's not controlled by external forces that you can trust the data on, but that takes time to develop because all of this that I went over with you is a very early part because then from this point, then we have to rebuild the model and repack and package it so that for deployment. Uh, 
but more specifically, we want to be able to make sure every part of it is run open source from the ground up. And that's where you see in our file structures uh, the use of private GPT and our own lar uh, local large action model and large language model storage. Uh, once part of this project is we want to deploy um, probably like Llama 2 or Llama 3 as our large language model and then build our own large and use that to build our own large action model for our computer operations. So this is a high level overview and I hope it made sense. If you have questions, reach out to me. Uh, join us in our community of developers, starting with the Rabbit R1 Club. We're going to work on that. Then we're going to move. And, and we also do have Project Eden on Discord as well. We have the Rabbit R1 Club on Discord. Uh, join both of the communities. Join, um, join up with us. Get connected. Get involved. Uh, clone the repository. Start looking around. Start browsing around. Start making um, improvement recommendations. And um, we're looking forward to uh, to working with everybody who's watching. So I know this is a lot longer video video than I was planning on originally making, but hopefully it made sense to everybody. And hopefully, um, uh, yeah, it all kind of uh, flowed together in some kind of cohesive way. So thanks for watching. And until next.